We're in a practice room at the University of Nottingham and uh, we're going to talk about two of my most favourite things in the whole universe which are music and physics and how they come together. This is a, a wonderful paper, a really elegant and really sophisticated analysis of a particular drum beat, what they describe as a virtuoso drum beat, by somebody called Jeff Picaro. Some of you who are drummers might be familiar with that name. Those of you who aren't, you will have heard Jeff Picaro. And this particular song that this uh, paper is based on is a relatively famous song, and you've probably heard it before. I So unfortunately Jeff Percaro is no longer with us, he's gone to the great big gig in the sky and we have instead Mr. Sean Riley, who many of you will know from Computerphile, who's going to help out and do some of the drum patterns for us. So we're going to ask Sean to do this beat, it's actually a pretty complicated and pretty difficult piece of music to play, a bit of difficult rhythm, from a song called I Keep Forgetting by somebody called Michael McDonald. Um, and Picaro was a session musician, he played on lots of different records, but this is one of his most acclaimed pieces. Although it sounds like a relatively straightforward beat, it's really difficult to play, and Procaro, when he's playing it, when you listen to the recorded version, it's got a fantastic groove, it makes you want to dance. What the researchers were interested in, well, they've been, they've been looking at patterns and rhythms over the you know, a course of a number of years now. What they wanted to focus on were variations in the timing. So that particular piece of music, that particular drumming pattern, has got a lot of what are called 16th notes. So that And what they're interested in is that variation. Instead of those types of fluctuations in the sound, that's what they're interested in. And they have looked at that mathematically, they've looked at the physics of that, they've recorded Picaro's drum beat. What most drummers would do, would they play it two hands. So Picaro plays it one hand, and he deliberately does that, and they've even got a quote from Picaro, it's, it's absolutely wonderful to have a drummer quoted in a, in a physics paper, and the quote from Picaro is here. I like the single-handed method because it's a lot smoother feel. For instance, in the Michael McDonald record, I keep forgetting, I tried doing the alternating stroke method, so that method with both hands, and it sounded just too stiff and staccato for me. Now, most drummers would say perhaps the opposite, and it's just because Percaro is such a wonderful drummer, he can get all those dynamics and all those fluctuations and all that groove in, in terms of how he varies the timing and also how he varies the volume. The physics of fluctuations is such a huge, important, exciting area because it connects to so many processes in the universe around us. Generally, when we think of a heartbeat, we think of something which is really regular. You know, the heartbeat is, we think we've got this really regular um, pulse happening. But in fact, if we look at it, and this is from a wonderful book, I recommend this book, a book called Ubiquity by Mark Buchanan, um, where he discusses lots and lots of aspects of fluctuations, but this is some um, data where you look at how the fluctuation of our heart rate changes. This is over the course, as you can see, in terms of seconds on the, on the axis here. If we look at over, over a long time scale, from, as you can see, from 54,000 up to 72,000, you can see it's far, from, it's far from even, it's far from perfectly timed. It's not like a metronome, it's like duh, 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 duh. But even if we go and look at, if we zoom in on a bit of this and look on a shorter time scale, what you see is the same overall type of structure. We call this self-similar in that, you know, okay, you've got an average rate, but you've got fluctuations about that rate. And then if we zoom in again, it's the same type of thing. You've got an average rate, but you've got fluctuations about that rate. Yeah. So this, this type of self-similarity, um, it's also related to something called fractals, which you might have heard about, crops up right across nature on, on very many different scales. And that's the important thing. It's scale-free. So, for example, with earthquakes, you get the same type of, of um, the same type of idea happening in terms of if you look at the magnitude of an earthquake versus the frequency of occurrence of, of those earthquakes. So, fluctuations of hi hat timing and dynamics in a virtuoso drum track of a popular music recording, and the virtuoso drum track is this Picaro track. And they've done they've gone to town on the analysis. So they've digitized it and they've looked at the the hi hat pattern in particular, and they've looked at the onset of that and they've 
timed that and they've looked at the variations in timing and what they find is that they get the same type of fluctuations, the same type of dynamics. What they're really interested in, like so many other physicists and scientists in general, is the, the sort of science of fluctuations, the science of noise. And um, they are particularly keen to look at those fluctuations in timing. Are they random? What fluctuations of what? So fluctuations of the, of, in terms of how he's hitting the drum, the, 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 the amount of force he's play, putting into the drum stroke, and also the timing, just in terms of when he hits the drum, when, when the, 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 where the beats sort of fall and where, what beats he chooses to accent, i.e. To, 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 to really accentuate and to bring out. Out. And different drummers will do that very, very differently. And what this paper was, what the group was interested in doing was looking at those fluctuations to see is he just doing that randomly? or to what extent are they correlated, to what extent are um, what he's done previously affecting what comes in the future. Is the suggestion here that a magnificent drummer like Picaro will have less fluctuations than a bad drummer or more fluctuations? So there's a, it's very interesting. So the, there's a very, it's like Goldilocks, there's a just right in terms of you don't want it too random um, because then it's all over the place and the ear gets very confused and you don't want it too um, regular because in fact if you were too regular it sounds just like a drum machine. You can program a drum machine or computer to be right on the beat, just exactly on the beat all the time. And that sounds awful to the human ear. Is the suggestion that a magnificent drummer like Picaro is doing this deliberately, or are they thinking he's doing it subconsciously? I, the, the, the argument would seem to be that he's doing it subconsciously. To the extent, of course, there's some deliberate aspect of it in terms of he wants to add that groove, but he's, he's spent years um, playing the drums. It's not like he thinks um, before he's gonna lay down the track on, on beat three, three, 278, I'm going to be a little bit louder than all the other beats or whatever. It's, it's natural and it's just like in terms of guitarists, they will choose to accent certain notes. But what's remarkable is that this type of effect they claim is, is universal, that when you go from different drummers, although they will accent those beats and the timing will vary differently from drummer to drummer, if you look at the large picture, it's the same mathematics that describes it every time and that's just remarkable. So in the conclusion to this paper, and you can get this paper yourself, it's online, it's open access, it's a journal called PLOS One, so it's entirely open access, you don't have to pay anything, you don't have to pay the hundred dollars or whatever to download it, like so many other papers. So you can turn to the conclusions, and there's some really neat conclusions in here. To learn more about the groove of iconic musicians such as Jeff Percaro, and about the universality of the considered phenomena, it would be important to compare one, different recordings of the same drummer, of course, two, different drummers, three, various tempos or and rhythms, four, different musical genres, and five, different playing styles. So single-handed 16th notes or double-handed 16th notes, for example. So this, this is just, they themselves say they're just scratching the surface. And it's, the, the potential there for a wide range of different studies is, is and a huge amount of really interesting research is vast. Much as I like Picaro as a drummer, I must admit that Michael McDonald's song doesn't quite do it for me. Right, so what do we want from you? Well, if you think you can do a better job than Sean, or indeed if you think you can do a better job than Neil Peart, or even if you don't think you can do a better job but you're a drummer and you'd like to help out science and indeed you'd like to get your name in a paper, then what we want you to do is to send in examples, samples of you drumming the start of, of Tom Sawyer, or indeed the whole thing, it's up to you. 